Kickstarter. The heyday of Kickstarter was probably mid 2010s, something like that. Yeah, right? 20 uh, teens, early, yeah. early to mid 20 teens. I would 100% okay. agree. Okay. Yeah, I have two questions. First of all, if you had to give advice to someone who was starting a hardware company today or a materials company today that needed to go on Kickstarter to raise money for the first product, <laughs> the barrier to entry there is just a lot harder because a lot uh -huh. of people actually already have funding, like venture uh -huh. funding or, or like legitimate dollars behind them and then launch their product on Kickstarter or do a pre-order or something along those lines on Kickstarter. Yeah. I would say Kickstarter nowadays, it's it's a much harder game to play. And we sort of lucked out timing wise. A lot of startup timing is, there is some, luck. there's, there's yeah. some luck associated with startup timing. There really is. And, and mm -hmm. market adoption cycles and where you happen to fall when you start up and how far ahead of the curve or on the curve or behind the curve you are adoption wise with your technology. Mm -hmm. There's a whole temporal aspect to that that is very hard to predict and, and very difficult to get 100% right. Doing that now, I, I would hesitate to say I have a great answer because I think launching a product in, in that sort of way where the idea was to get customer buy-in early on. Whenever Kickstarter saw, started, it was a really interesting proposition. And now, like I said, it's it's honestly been infiltrated by a lot of people that already have a lot of money and then launch. Mm -hmm. And so to me, it kind of dilutes that experience a little bit as a result, where, where I feel like it's supposed to be about like just organic interest in developing that product versus pumping up with funding to begin with and then going into it. Not knocking that, it's a re interesting way to, to sort of get metrics around customer adoption. Mm -hmm. But I, to me, the, the fundamental purpose of that platform was to be like, these are people that would not be able to raise funding elsewhere or yeah. otherwise. Let's give them a platform to really get out in front of people. So yeah. really the only cost you had up front, other than like having the baseline level of the product developed was, as with anything on the internet, a good video is what sells it. Your only cost is going to be having a video production company doing your video. So, you. the, so the best thing is go raise some money. Dan used that money to go on Kickstarter <laughs> to raise some more money. Yeah, it, well, it depends <laughs> on what you're doing. I, I, I think because of the, that's the way the Kickstarter path goes now, I don't know that Kickstarter is necessarily the, bad, the best, path. best way to go. Okay. You go on there now, there's thousands of products and all of them have extremely high quality videos done. It's just the signal to noise ratio is hard to sift through now. There's no like just clear winners in my mm. opinion. I can almost guarantee I would not be able to get navigate it the same way today if put in the same position. Plus I, I've, I've been spending some time on Kickstarter on the Kickstarter website and Indiegogo website. Mm. And I started noticing that you can actually do way better on Indiegogo than Kickstarter now. Yes. Yeah, that's that's surprising. It used to be the opposite. But. Well, yeah, Indiegogo was the fault, was the me too, was the yeah. follow on that had different yeah. terms of use and everything else. So they yeah. had their own little niche that they were focusing on. I don't remember yeah. the exact terms. I just remember there was a couple yeah. different differences that were substantial enough that that's what they marketed off of. And that's how they really started and got their own following as well. But Kickstarter was the was the original. The infrastructure is needed for physical or hardware technology startups to thrive has been eroded, basically. So for example, it's hard to get a hardware company going. How about we have a Kickstarter company where you can just make an MVP and show off your MVP and get, get some funding. That's gone, right? You got to have a lot of money to be really good at. It's tough. You know, the entire ecosystem is being eroded. And you just mentioned a very good point. One of the ways in which you could circumvent that in the past was Kickstarter and that's gone too. So that's, that's very sad. I mean, it honestly, it, it's a, it's a testament to Kickstarter success. Kickstarter was so successful at launching products yeah. that now people that are very well funded launch products yeah. there. And yeah. as a result, the sort of idea of getting access to something new and maybe a little raw that's unpolished yeah. has gone away because those products don't stick out anymore. Yeah. A customer that's wanting to adopt something new is going to adopt the shiniest, most polished one, not the <laughs> one that looks more raw, where previously I think you could get access to that a little bit more easily. Yeah, yeah. There might still be a market, though. For, I, th I think there for is. For very, very early adopters who just want, okay, you have a solid idea about this thing. Let me, let me take a look at it. Let me try it out. The reason I say this is a lot of companies, even established companies, will release products that are not perfect and tell you that we're still working on it. And everyone would just be happy when you, yeah. When you, yeah, everyone would be happy. They're, they're acting like they start up with just an MVP, but under the cover of a really big company, like they're getting the benefits. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. it's really surprising.